Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. I feel like we might become the last kind of real news that you listen to. That's the way I've felt over the last six months in particular. Leading up to this election, I feel like there's very few of us left who are like, hey man, are we reading the same things? Because it doesn't feel like we're reading the same things that are being reported. I don't know if that's true. I think there's a sign. My, my buddy, uh, Patrick Donlin, by the way, from the 82nd Airborne. Mm-hmm. Great story, by the way. So he came into the Army as a cook. Okay. And halfway through a deployment, or actually the beginning of a deployment, they're like, hey, you're, you're infantry. You're not a cook anymore. Come on, man. Like, you're obviously an infantryman. So, so he, like... Left being a cook, became an infantryman, never went to infantry school. I, he, I think he went later or some shit, but uh, got his CIB, his combat infantry badge, as a cook in Iraq. Really? So he's a fucking badass. Wasn't Steven Seagal a cook in the military in one of See, those that's, movies? See, that's a movie. <laughs> You're talking about Casey. Casey, what the fuck's his name? Ryback. Yeah. Right? From, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. No, he was, he was a chef after being a Navy SEAL in the movie. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, uh, So gotcha. he, this, this guy, Patrick, <laughs> Pat Donlin went the other way. He was just telling me today, we were just talking about how there's so many of us out there that don't care about any of the superfluous bullshit. Yeah. Like, every, everybody's instinct is to, uh, what, do you, what do you mean you're going to vote for Trump? What are you, what are you racist? Like, no, I, here's the reason why. I don't, I'm not even a huge fan, but if I have to choose between somebody I think is shitty and somebody I think is shitty and is trying to fucking backdoor socialism, obviously I'm not going to choose the socialism one. Right. That's why these fucking everybody is like, Oh my God, dude, the media is so out of touch. Maybe more than they've ever been out of touch before in the history of this country. Like it's, it's not become like even, even with uh, Lawrence O'Donnell show is one of the most liberal people in news media, mm-hmm. his fucking producer quit and said, look, our entire narrative was driven by clicks and what we could do to fucking bring the fringe in, right. essentially. Like, how can we divide further? And people, look, if you're a good person working in media, at some point it gets to you. Like, a lot, I, I know a lot of people who work in politics and media who have for a short time suspended their fucking moral compass a little bit, if you want to call it that. Mm-hmm. Just because they're like, hey, look, this is probably the lesser two evils. I'm going to work hard. I'm passionate about making these changes. I want to get involved. And it's the same thing with politicians. They get involved for very good reasons very very frequently, like Crenshaw and Kensinger and a lot of our friends. Yeah. Tammy Duckworth on the left side and fucking Tulsi Gabbard on the left side. They, they, they love their fucking country, and they want to get in there and fucking make changes that they think benefit themselves. And everybody comes to the table with their own perspective. People like Kensinger and Crenshaw come in like, hey, we got to take care of our fucking veterans. We got to take care of our police. People like Tulsi Gabbard and Tammy Duckworth like, hey, we got to take care of our native people. We got to take care of our land. We got to take care of our people of color. All those voices are important. But once they become corrupted by all this bullshit that happens, Mm -hmm. ultimately, they either become corrupted or they fucking leave. And to be honest, I'm proud of people who can do it sometimes because I couldn't. I would immediately leave. As soon as I saw all the hypocrisy in D.C., I'd be like, fuck this and fuck all of you people. But some of them have hung in and, and actually make a difference. And people like Cren- Crenshaw get criticized a lot for trying to at least listen to what the other side has to say. Right. He's like, that whole thing with the fucking red flag laws. I understand why red flag laws are a bad idea. And so does he, by the way. If you would fucking listen to anything he fucking has to say, he agrees. But what do we do with that information? If we have information that points towards a potential solution to some kind of gun violence issue, what is, it about our, what is our responsibility there? What does it become once we have the information to make something happen? And look, the solution may be, or I'm sorry, the, the discovery may be that, look, we have this information and we can probably use it to stop some of this shit, but by doing that, we create this much bigger problem that affects liberty at large, and we just can't do it. I'm sorry, that's an unfortunate reality. That's, that is a legitimate thing to say, and it's, it only happens when you go through the process in a way that is fucking intellectually fucking right. 
You know what I mean? It doesn't happen by just saying, no, fucking it's thou shalt not infringe or whatever the fuck. It doesn't happen when you fucking come to the table like that. It only happens when you have a thoughtful discussion and allow for people to fucking, it's called red cell, right? Every, the, the government, the military does it all the time. Anytime we have a plan, we're like, what could go wrong? What could be the fucking second and third order effects of this bullshit that we don't see right now? Are we making a bigger problem than we're solving is the answer, right? Or is the question rather. So we have blown so far beyond that, and it's only because of the media. The media is so full of shit. Yeah. Like uh, it's, 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 I think it's almost irredeemable at this point. So you've worked behind the scenes on some of these campaigns um, in different states before. What happens as a candidate gets elected? I guess let's talk about the media from the, the pre-process, right? Uh, when they're running for whatever office they're running for, and then once they win and, and achieve their goal and get in, how does media influence these candidates as they go along? Um, because I'm trying to figure out where everyone gets lost in this. Um, now, clearly, Trump is in there blowing it all to shreds, like with Twitter and everything else. There's fucking typos and all that other bullshit, right? Probably every other day, there's a typo on something, Kofifi and all the other shit, right? But at least you know he's doing it himself, where he's just like, all right, is he on the toilet right now? Um, just typing in shit on Twitter. Yes, he is, but at least you know the information is, is real, and mm -hmm. it's coming from that person. What happens to the rest of these candidates as they're going along? We have some friends who are running right now, and I see some of their uh, shit on social media, right. and it's just like, all right, I want to I ask you about it, because I'm trying to figure out how it gets so distorted. I think the House is more susceptible than even the Senate. Um, and, you know, it's a sliding scale because, look, to win at the statewide level costs more money and to win at the national level costs more money. But at the local level for Congress, they run every two years. Mm -hmm. Every fucking person in Congress, the 438 people, they run every, every two years, right? Yeah. So you get maybe three sessions in Congress. If you include the fucking seasonal breaks and the holiday breaks and all that bullshit, you get three sessions to take shit back from your district to the federal level and try to get it done. And after about those three sessions, sometimes in the middle of the third session, you have to be campaigning again. You have to be fundraising, you have to be out of the stump. And if you're out there campaigning, you're not doing your job. And it's a system that I think is fucked. I think it's stupid. The idea that you have to fucking run for that office every two years is crazy to me. And the fact that you can stay in that office for 50 fucking years, having to run like, not only do we create a situation where running to every two years requires that you depend on corporate sponsors and you absolutely fucking do. And the media, you know, it, it makes more sense now that you're saying it out loud. Like, you're right. Every two years, like, fuck, two years is, is the blink of an eye. Yes. For everything we do yeah. in life. Even, in, like, even oh, for shit. the presidency, which is a four-year term, mm -hmm. there's this very old fucking maxim that you have 18 months to govern. And the rest of that time, you're either doing, you're, you're fucking campaigning for re-election or you're in a lame duck session. You have 18 months as a four-year term. So what do you think you have as a two-year term? It's even less than that. Yeah. So we've created a system that is completely inefficient. And not only is it inefficient, but it breeds things like uh, corporate sponsorship. Profit motive in government is always a bad idea. Like we should make decisions that are best for the most amount of people. That's what a democracy is supposed to do. It's not supposed to fucking make decisions based on uh, timetables and, and corporate interests and stuff like that. Right. And it's not just the left or the right that does it. It's fucking everybody that does it. And it just depends on what you are. Oil, oil and gas is typically on the right. Mm -hmm. Big pharmaceuticals typically on the left. Right. That's why when this landmark fucking bill came out, the, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare came out. It was nothing more than a fucking handout to private insurance companies that had no regulation at all about big pharmaceutical, which can charge you twenty seven dollars for a fucking aspirin when you're in the hospital. Yeah. Right. Eighty three percent of every single Bankruptcy case, private bankruptcy case in this country is because of unpaid medical expenses. 83%. If 83% of anything happened, we shut down the whole fucking country for a mortality rate in COVID of 0.35% in this country. But 83% of bankruptcies happen because of medical expenses, and we will do shit about health care, except have the liberals come around and present a bill that essentially tells people you can be as healthy as you can afford to be. Fuck you. And then they'll go and hammer that point home in the press and say, like, oh, Here's we did what, it. Yeah, we did it, man. Hell yeah. yeah. You didn't do shit. As a matter of fact, when fucking push came to shove 
and believe what you want to about women's reproductive health and all that shit. But I personally am pro-choice. I don't really give a shit because it's not me. But 97% of Planned Parenthood's budget goes towards preventative care, which means like preventing cervical cancer and breast cancer. Mm -hmm. That is the vast majority of what they do for people who cannot afford to get it otherwise. Right. That's what they do for the most part. And we politicize that issue, right? And then as soon as, like I said, as soon as push came to shove for the Democrats, and I have a, I have a friend who actually left the Obama campaign in 2012 because of this, because once they passed that shit and all the stuff went through the courts about who had to pay what kind of... Uh, money for for uh, for contraception and shit. Mm-hmm. Whenever they made that religious exemption, she was like, "Fucking done." Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like, just because you fucking disagree with it, these women can't get health care anymore. Fuck you. And it's like that on both sides of the aisle. And it's not about there's no in, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with being conservative or liberal. As a matter of fact, they are the yin and yang. Mm-hmm. Conservative is the father, liberal is the mother. I've said this for fucking 10 years now, and I've, I've, I've written sh- uh, like an actual short story that outlines all this stuff about how the conservative is the like kind of quasi emotional but hardworking dad, and the liberal is the fucking emotional mother, and it, those two things fucking work together. That's what yin and yang are. That's, that, the concept of yin and yang is older than fucking Western civilization, and it is a real thing, and it happens, and we ignore it. We think that they're, t- and we, we will have convinced ourselves that we're in battle with each other when really we're one symbol, right? right? That is what it's supposed to fucking be. And it doesn't mean because somebody disagrees with you that they're somehow evil or wrong. It means that they're the other part of the equation and we're trying to balance the equation. That is what it is. But we've lost that. And it's because there's more money in division. Yes. In, in particular in the, in the media. Um, and... In particular, in fucking corporations, too, where it's like, yeah. hey, man, uh, if we know we can sell to this segment of the audience, we'll make more money um, or uh, for public appearances, um, especially with the Black Lives Matter and everything else that's going on. Like if you are a brand out there and you don't support it, um, you know, you're getting fucking hammered right now. Shit. If you're a brand out there and you support Trump, you're getting fucking hammered right now. I've never heard of Goya beans before um, at all. I'm not a big bean guy. Forgive me. Um, for, for everybody else who is in my Latino brothers and sisters out there. Um, but once the, the president of Goya came out and said, I support Trump and I think he's doing a great job with the country. Fuck Goya, dude. Fuck yeah, we're all done with Goya. Blah, 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 blah. Now the troll that they did on it with President Trump and Ivanka and all that, those people, it was, I thought it was fucking hilarious. But uh, the media made a big deal out of it of like they care more about beans than they do about your lives and everything else. That's that's the fucking thing though, right? Like I was in uh I follow people on Facebook especially. Mm-hmm. Like I hate Facebook, but so, I will so follow I. I will follow people who are in my general periphery who I know have liberal beliefs because I know that they they will often post memes or whatever the fuck or or like it's very like down your nose questions like Tell, how, how can you even rationalize voting for Trump at this point? Like, right, All right, right, cool. Right. I'll, I'll fucking buy it on that. Sure. Because <laughs> look, it's not just about how can you rationalize voting for Trump? It's like, what option do I really have here? And I'm weighing the fucking cost of two options. That's what it really is. Mm-hmm. And if I'm looking at a pile of shit versus a pile of shit that's trying to backdoor socialism into this country, then obviously I'm going to make the decision that doesn't involve the socialism. I'm okay with shit. I'm used to shit. Yeah. This is America, brother. <laughs> like our best and brightest don't run for office. Let's be real about that. Elon Musk is not running for office. No. Joe Rogan is not running for office. Fucking these people, they do what they do. They go out and make money. And even, even the, the only people you see that do it are people like uh, Bloomberg who, who have accomplished so much that they only need to accomplish something else. It's not about service to the community anymore. It's about them. And that's why... I think, personally, that Kamala Harris is the dumbest pick for VP since Sarah Palin, which mm. wasn't that long ago, to be yeah. frank. Uh, 2008, they yeah. were in a, 12 they years were, ago. They were in a bind then, and they wanted to get somebody to fucking dig them out of the hole. Uh, I get that it. That was I mean, the it was wrong a, choice. It was a mistake. Steve Smith agrees that it was a mistake. Um, I, I, but, but to be fair, I, 
McCain at that point needed a Hail Mary. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, he wasn't winning anyways, in my opinion. It was one of those things in 2008. because Nobody I, was going to beat Obama then. No. I, I, was, I was in L.A. during that period, and the excitement that he generated uh, was the same excitement that I saw on the, the campaign rallies for Trump. Yeah. And, you know, everybody will go back to 2016 and say— The same, the same excitement that you're seeing for Trump now, by the way. Yeah, correct. By I, the way. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. Nate, Nate Silver may want to add that in to his little fucking metric. Because he, he's been wrong every time. You can't measure that. No. And, and I tell people all the time, I'm like, look, man, you cannot measure the excitement for some person. I remember when Obama ran in 2012 against Mitt Romney. Mitt was so stiff and fucking boring yeah. that I, I, you just felt that he was going to lose. And like, there was no part of me that was any, you know, holding any grand delusions that it was like, all right, great. Even I think I sat out that election. I don't think I've, I even voted just because I, I couldn't get excited about either of those candidates, to be honest with you. Um, and, and typically I vote all the time, but uh, I could not get excited about it. And he was ineffective with the media on how to make himself more exciting. Ironically, mm. after the fucking race was over and he lost, he had a documentary that came out on Netflix that was. Yeah. Really, f like it made him very, you know, self depreciating and affable and everything else. He, and he like, is an affable. Why do you guy. put that out before? Well, man? here's here's the problem. Here's the problem with Romney, and it's the same problem that the left has. They are fundamentalists. They believe so much that what they think is true, and that everybody should, if they're moral human beings and smart human beings, should believe like they do. Mm -hmm. That they can't conceptualize the idea of somebody disagreeing with them, and that is not the right way to go about life. Like if you can't be empathetic and put yourself in other people's shoes and understand where they're coming from because it's not all about you. Ultimately, this is a country of 330 million people and there's fucking Mexican immigrants that don't even speak English. There's fucking billionaires. There's fucking black people who have never known what fucking true upward mobility is. There's fucking white farmers who have had everything they've owned ripped away from them over the last 30 years. There's all these people with all these very complex lives that have, they, they're, they're looking at America as a whole through the lens of their experience. That's what people do, right? They look, through, they look at any situation through the lens of their own situation, experience, and understanding, and they make decisions based on that. We can fucking do this. We can do this. It's yin and yang, man. It's, it's, if you listen to the media, then you will always be wrong because all they're going to sell you is fucking clickbait. They're only going to yeah. sell you shit that sells advertising for them, right? And what gets the most eyes? Somebody making a reasonable and passionate plea or somebody like Hitler or somebody like Stalin or somebody like Mao, right and left, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Whomever's at the fucking extreme is gonna get the most attention because they do the most, they say and do the most radical shit. Like this kid that got, this white kid that got shot in the head, mm -hmm. right? I, I don't remember, I'd have to look his name up. <clears throat> but if you go, he was shot, he was a young white child Shot in the head by a black man. Um, and by the way, that's not a monolith. That's not, there's, black people aren't out on the streets right now gunning for white children. That's not a thing that happens. Just like there aren't fucking police out on the street right now gunning for black people. Because if it was true, more than fucking nine of them would get shot a year. Cannon Hinton is the, Hinton. Is the kid's name. Yeah. yeah. If you go to uh, MSNBC or CNN or... or uh, or New York Times or Washington Post, and you type in this young man's name, you will get zero search results. Not one fucking story has been done about him. The first story that popped up, by the way, so I'm, I'm looking at it now, is uh, rmx.news. I, I don't even I don't even know what that is. I've never even heard of it. No one's covering it. Uh, Cannon Hinnant, a five-year-old white boy from North Carolina, was brutally murdered uh, by a black male neighbor. He uh, was shot in the head point blank while riding his bicycle. Uh, in a case that has received almost zero national media attention. Uh, dis despite the dramatic death of the boy, many are pointing out uh, that the race of the victim and the perpetrator may be a big factor of why major news outlets have ignored, ignored the story, which is why we decided to do this show today. Right. Because, yes, they are. I, dude, I barely knew about this story. You came in today and we're talking about it, and I was like, man... I think I saw something in passing, but only, you know what it was? It was because I'm in subgroups on Drinking Bros. Yeah. 
people who don't know, Drinking Bros is a, is is got a private Facebook group. Anybody can join. Uh, the only rule is just don't be a cunt. Mm -hmm. um, but this story was being shared in there, and I and in the North Carolina group, and uh, because there's subgroups for every single state and, and and a lot of times cities. And I remember glossing by this, and I was like, eh, this can't be true. Because I, like, I'm starting to be conditioned to that of like, yeah. oh, well, maybe, you know, I don't know who this website is. Maybe right. that's a fake story or whatever. And it's like the more and more I dug, no, this is a real story. It's just not being reported on because mm -hmm. it doesn't fit the time that we're going through right now. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't know when it happened exactly, but we've we're, we're on this path now where there is no news. There's just a flurry of information and because of profit motive, obviously there's going to be clickbait shit, but there's also going to be, there's also going to be misinformation from me. Like, look, if you're a fucking, if you're the New York times or Washington post right now, mm -hmm. one of your only lines of defense is to make organizations like even on the left with Axios, who's way far left. Yeah. In my opinion, yeah. like they get, they get categorized as center left sometimes, but they only cover left shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Axios on the left daily wire on the right. Mm -hmm. Right. Those are kind of analogs for me at least. Sure. Uh, it only behooves you if you're fucking CNN or Washington post or New York times to fucking trash those organizations. Well, I mean, somebody said something, but here's the real story on fucking right. whatever. And that's how they'll title it. Right. To make themselves seem like the authority. Look, you're not the authority, and you haven't been for a very long time. It's it's not only is it disingenuous, but it it it, it injures the American fucking social discourse, which I think is probably one of the more egregious uh, actions against the American public by a major organization, whether it be the government or a business or anything else, in the 21st century. I think the fucking disillusion uh, or the uh, the dilution of 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 uh, of of factual correspondence from the media over the last 20 years particularly has been super problematic, not only for our overall fucking understanding of the world, but also for our ability to make sound, reasonable judgments for the people who lead us. We can't make that anymore. Like it's impossible, I think at this point, for us to make a reasonable de uh, decision on who to elect because we can't agree on what the fucking reality of the situation is. So how do you fucking do that? If you get a group of scientists in the room who are trying to study, I don't know, the fucking shape of the earth and half of them don't believe it's fucking round, right. then that study's not going anywhere. Right, right. You know what I mean? And that's where we are politically right now, and it's nonsense. Because we can all agree that we can agree on a lot of stuff. We can agree that we need fucking a strong and well-balanced and educated and empathetic police force serve and fucking protect. That's what we need. If there's assholes out there, then defunding police is not going to help. No. It, when you fucking Walmart versus, or let's go, let's go Sam's Club versus Costco. Sam's Club makes, for every dollar Sam's Club makes off in revenue off of one employee, Costco makes $6 because they pay more, they hire better people. The end. So you think defunding fucking police is the solution. You think taking an organization that you feel like has a problematic approach to dealing with human beings because of their lack of education and training and screening, you think taking money away from education, training, and screening is going to solve that fucking problem. You are a stupid motherfucker, all right? You don't care about the problem. All you want to do is take some petty, punitive action towards police because you don't like them. That's it. It has nothing to do with a fucking solution. It only has to do with your fucking personal emotions and you fucking interjecting your bullshit. And primarily, by the way, we discussed this two weeks ago on the news, the vast majority of black people living in urban areas want the same amount or more police in their area. Yeah, We're talking about 81%. 80, 81%. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. It's white fucking people who think that because they see fucking perceived slights in the media and they, and, and it's the other part of that is like, Oh, you're just a fucking denier, man. You're a denier. No, the fucking data is the data, bitch. Nine yeah. motherfuckers are dying a year from these fucking unarmed shootings that you're so fucking up in arms about out of 330 million people. And the vast majority of the black people who live in these communities want the same or more police. Mm -hmm. It is you. It is you skinny, white, stupid motherfuckers that are convinced that you know best for somebody else that is driving this whole fucking conversation and this absolute nonsense. And not only is it stupid, but it's harming people's actual lives. You are fucking at best amoral 
if not evil in, in believing that shit and pushing it because you have no self-awareness. You can't fucking take yourself out of the situation, how you feel about it. Fuck your feelings. Feelings are not facts. Get yourself out of the fucking way and start having a real discussion with people who actually live these things. If you look on Instagram yesterday, uh, I don't really like a lot of these guys that, that run the fucking super far right sites, but like the typical liberal had a video of it of black people in Chicago walking up and down the street screaming at white protesters, essentially. Some of, them, some of the protesters were black. They're like, hey, where the fuck were you guys when all these black kids got shot in the fucking face? Right. Do black lives matter or they do not? And look, that's not something for me to say. That's something for them to say, but they said it, and I'm one to listen, right? I listen to that kind of stuff. When people are so frustrated with how things are going on the street, and it reflects the idea that 81% of black Americans, particularly in urban areas, want the same amount or more police because they want to be safe. It's one of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We want to feel safe and secure. It's, it, this isn't fucking new. We didn't just make this shit up recently. Like, oh, no, this is a, it's a conservative idea that we need strong police. No, it's a fucking human idea, motherfucker. We've needed it for a long time, and finally we had it, right? And then this narrative started that, oh, it's fucking abusive and all this stuff. And look, there's been cases of abuse. L.A. was bad in the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. It was super bad. There's a lot of racist bullshit going on there. And it's, and it's gone on in other places as well. That is a symptom of us not being vigilant as a culture. It is not a symptom of the intrinsic negative value of policing. Motherfucker. Yeah, and, and I'm, you know, as I'm reading all of this and as it happens in city by city, the police getting defunded, L.A., Austin it just happened here in Austin, Texas. Um, I love how we get here and 48 hours later, yeah. they, they rip away one third of the police budget, one third of the police budget. That's um, all right. I'm upping my gun budget by one third. So it yeah, be a lot of people are, yeah. a lot of people are. And, uh, it's one of these things where again, with the media, I have read no, not one, not one single article saying, Hey guys, Here's why defunding the police is a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I, I can't find one fucking article in the media. And it's crazy to me. It's almost as if no one in the media ha has ever needed the police in their entire yeah. life for some reason. Like, wait till you actually need it. Um, and then tell me we need to defund the police. You know what? I'm going to read this. Uh, Officer Daniels, Justin Daniels, who a lot of you are familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, Big social media following. He is, yeah. He posted Great this. Great dude. He's been on the show before. He posted this today, and it's an open letter from an Austin PD officer. Let me find it right quick. Keep talking, mm -hmm. and I'll find it. Um, what I would love to see is more of these open letters published, but the media will turn these down. It seems like every day there's a hot take op-ed piece in all of these fucking papers between the New York Times or LA Times or uh, New York Magazine and everything else, and it's like, hey, man, here's, here's my thoughts on this the race and everything else that's going on and it's, and it's bullshit. I've never seen a hot take on why it is completely immoral to fucking defund the police yet. Like I haven't seen any, um, I haven't seen anything on CNN. I haven't seen anything on, uh, uh, all these other fucking ABC news, NBC, Rachel Maddow, all these people on what is actually going to happen when you defund the police. We've seen it in LA. In yeah. just a few weeks, it's, what happened I mean, to It that starts city. with homeless people everywhere. Yes. And look, I mean, that's an issue that we, and nobody, this is not new. The homeless thing is not new. No. We've chosen as a society to not do anything about it. Yes. Frankly. Yeah. Let's be real about that. Uh, but it's, it starts with that and then it graduates to petty crime. Mm -hmm. And this is where broken windows theory comes in. It graduates to petty crime and it graduates to oh, this is a soft area with little policing and then organized crime starts coming in. This yeah. is how it works, man. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a natural progression. Here's the letter from, an, from a current Austin PD officer, and I have no idea who it is. I just know that we've been delivered this uh, letter. <clears throat> uh, he or she says, we have served with the best of our ability for many years. We have missed anniversaries, birthdays, funerals, sports, and many other things that we could be there for you, so that we could be there for you. When you called, we came. When you were victimized, we stepped in and stopped it. When you were on your last breath, we gave you another and another. As many, as many as it took to keep you alive. We held your child and loved on them when they were scared. We comforted you when your loved ones passed. We put our lives in harm's way when the wolf came for you. 
we ran, when you ran from the gunfire, we ran towards it. Uh, when you were sat trapped in your car, we held your hand until the rescue crew could cut you out. We brought you lunch, we bought you lunch when others walked by and did nothing. That's about the homeless thing, obviously. We brought justice to your family when someone was taken from you. We gave you a voice. When you had none, we stepped in. When you couldn't protect yourself, we saved your sons, daughters, husbands, aunts, brothers, and sisters. The day came when we needed your help, but you never showed. When we asked you to stand up <clears throat> and give us a voice, you remained silent. When we were at our lowest, hold on, sorry, I got a glare. When we were at, when you, when we were at our lowest, you offered no help. When we were being attacked, you watched from afar. When the time came for you to fight for us, you stayed home and kept silent. And to those who didn't, thank you. Uh, the Austin Police Department has been almost completely defunded. One th by the way, one third of their budget has been cut, uh, including forensic science yeah. for rape kits yep. and, and murder DNA uh, for mounted patrols, things like that. Gone. Uh, 911. This bit, 911 got cut by $17 million. Mm -hmm. uh, there's barely enough to pay for our salary, medical care, and retirement. Now when the wolf puts a bomb at your doorstep, we won't be there. When a drunk driver kills your family member, we won't be there. When your family member is drowning at the lake, we won't be there. When someone crashes into your car, we won't be there. When gangs take over your neighborhood, we won't be there. When you're assaulted on one of the many trails, we won't be there. When your child is lost, we won't be there to find them. We won't be there because your Austin City Council has shut down almost every unit needed to keep you safe and be there for you. They took everything from you while you sat in silence. They did it for their own personal gain and agenda, and they won't be there for you and made sure we couldn't either. Signed, your guardian and Austin police officer. Man, uh, Georgia, mark the time code of that and, and put that up in there um, because uh, I, I'd like to see that letter and put it up on the screen throughout. It's just, uh, it's heartbreaking because it's true. And that, that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, but the problem is people aren't going to know for a few more years. This isn't something that happens overnight, right? right? This will be gradual. Your city will turn to shit. It will be crime infested. There will be more homelessness uh, and more lawlessness. And you're not going to know because right now, today, you made a fucking snap decision uh, on defunding the police. Uh, and it's not going to catch up with you for a couple of years. You're not going to see your cities deteriorate overnight, but it's going to be pretty goddamn close. Um, and the media says nothing about this. I didn't see this posted in the media today. No, and it won't be. No, it won't be. Um, <clears throat> That's why I'm glad a lot of these guys like Daniels and uh, Mike the Cop mm -hmm. and Hook'em and Book'em, uh, Mike, uh, well, I don't want to say his name, but no donuts here. Mm -hmm. He's an NYPD cop. And a number of other guys are out there actually fucking, like they spent the time to learn what the regulations are and they fucking put the information out in a legal way. Right? I mean, Mike's retiring now. He's actually retired. Finally. Yes. Uh, got out, got it, out. Right. And the he took some heat from it too. Yeah, he did. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm glad those guys are out there putting this shit out because without them, you know, where would we, where would we, we wouldn't, we wouldn't know about some of this stuff. Like you don't understand the perspective of people that have, that have really dedicated their lives to doing something positive for their community. Like that's a real thing that happens and mm -hmm. it's not cop just cops. There are community leaders. There are people who have fucking fought for women's rights for fucking rights for people of color for fucking, uh, for, for everything for veterans. There's, there's packs out there packs. There's a, there's fucking nonprofits out there that are fighting on behalf of veterans for police, for everybody. There's people out there that are fucking literally, they, they, they love this country so much that they feel like they have to do something. Mm -hmm. and they're trying to find it and I, I appreciate that you know it's and to and to turn turn that around and fucking uh you don't see them as an individual you see them as an as a i don't know a fucking effigy of the organization they represent like oh he's a cop fuck cops right, right? it's a human being who has chosen 
to put their life on the line and very much complicate their personal life because being a police officer and having a family is not an easy thing to do. No. Right? They've chosen to go down this path because they care about this country and they want it to be a great country. But you see them as a monolith. It's the same thing as thinking all black people are criminals. It's no different. It is no fucking different. And I don't understand how you can stomach that. Honestly, I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, look, you got emotional reading that letter. Um, is it because you know the sacrifice and you went through that yourself? Um, or is it because you love this country and you know what's going to happen? Well, look, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of us out there that have seen what real suffering looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, white children in Portland, Oregon, who are mad because whatever the fuck reason they're mad for, yeah, honestly, yeah. Uh, like things didn't, just didn't go their way or whatever. With the election. Like, or, any, or anything. It's, you know? it's, it's always nonsense. Like they, it's this whole fucking, uh, it started in the fucking mid-90s with this like glorification of people like Che Guevara. He was a fucking murderer. He killed, anybody that was gay in his camp got murdered, by the way. You stupid motherfuckers that are walking around with his face on your shirt. Uh, and our <laughs> a lot buddy, of tattoos as well. <laughs> yeah, and our, and our buddy fucking uh, walked into the jungle and shot him in the face, by the way. I've always wanted to have him on the show, but he's like 80 now, and I don't know if he really wants to have, even, have eh, his, even have his name out 80 there. 80 would be great. You know? I mean, I think he's 82 or 83 now. I don't, know if, I don't know if he really wants his name out there like that right. at this point just because of his family shit, but he's a Latino dude that worked for the agency, and he shot fucking Che Guevara right in the fucking face. Uh, out in the jungle. Anyways, the glorification of this piece of shit and just like moderation, moderate fundamentalism is one of the most dangerous things because it kind of slowly introduces the idea of fundamentalism into stuff. And it, may, it creates a scenario where you have to choose between one extreme or the other. You know what I mean? So for people like me and tens of thousands, maybe even millions of others that have been and situations like that that have seen true abject poverty and suffering, like real shit. People from my unit that went down to Haiti in 2010 after that earthquake, mm -hmm. or people that have been to Iraq and Afghanistan and Africa, particularly Sub-Saharan Sub Africa, or Eastern Africa and Somalia and Eritrea where it's been fucked for, for fucking hundreds of years. Um, we know what suffering is, and this ain't it. You know what I mean? Yeah. This ain't it. It's, it's it was, such a pleasure and an honor to fight for a country that wasn't like that. Right. Like it made you feel good about yourself to be able to fight for that. And then you come back here and it's like people are fucking pissed off because of what exactly? Look, there are, there are slights. It's always going to be like that. Human beings are going to make mistakes. They're going to have prejudices and irrational fears and past history with with, with family members and other people that are going to fucking contribute to them making mistakes in real time. That is not a reason to abandon what makes this country great. And that's kind of what we're doing right now. Yeah. And, and, and without cause or care, um, because everything that is printed by the media, they don't care. And they don't care what the cause is no, it's or, fire and or forget. What, what this is going to cause afterwards. Once these articles are out, once these opinions are out, these op-ed pieces are out, it's on to the next one, right? Because you've got to fill up these news cycles. They've got to try to make as much money as they can. Um, whether they are right or wrong, they don't give a shit about. And it's going to take somebody with deep pockets later on down the, mm -hmm. the line to hold them accountable. But even then... Eh, everybody kind of forgets about the story. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we saw it today with the, the fucking FISA guy, um, the, the attorney for the FBI who What's his name? forged those fucking emails um, in, the, in the Mueller probe. And it's like, mm. man, again, not a lot of press on this, but it's like, hey, man, so like, yeah, everybody was illegally wiretapped, right? Like, that was a thing in 2016, but we're magically cool with that yeah i mean look it's not on cnn or anywhere today there's what's the guy's name hang on not the not the guy being investigated but uh hang on a second you sent me a fucking link hang i on. did yeah uh, i'm not seeing it hang on yeah, uh, the guy, by the way, you, I mean, you can, you have to basically search for it because it feels like Twitter and Facebook and all this shit has just shut it down. Like any, 
article that is negative about the left. They have essentially shut down at this point. And um, a lot of this shit is so fucking hard to find that you're like, all right, where? Where is this? Um, it's John Durham is the guy doing the probe. Correct. And he's... Uh, so Attorney General Barr was on several news outlets yesterday talking about it and how because people were asking like hey this it's election cycle this is the time of year when fucking news against the other particularly legal news against the other side comes out mm -hmm. and he's trying to reassure people that we're going to do things right but we're also not going to hold up evidence just because of the election uh look i don't trust attorney general Barr any farther than i can throw this goddamn building across that fucking colorado river right there frankly yeah. because he's got a history of abusing illegal wiretaps against American citizens. Fuck him. But information is information. And what is the fucking fiduciary, for lack of a better phrase, I know that's not right, but for the, the fiduciary responsibility of the attorney general and the president to either sit on information that makes the other side look bad, that's legal, or not use it. Because we know what the Obama administration did. They made shit up. Mm -hmm. They went out of their way to you to weaponize the CIA which isn't even supposed to be conducting operations domestically, first of all. He weaponized the CIA domestically to try to fucking disrupt the Trump administration after it began. Not during the fucking election part, but after it began. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like in the lame duck session between November and January, he tried to fuck over Trump for the next four years, which means he tried to fuck over America for the next four years. So I don't trust any of these motherfuckers, frankly. And I think they're going to do whatever they can to try to push their own agenda. Look, you don't have to trust people. You can trust people to be themselves, right? If I go into a sandwich shop, I'm not expecting a great steak. I expect a great sandwich. <laughs> and it's irrational to expect a great steak. Yeah. So it's irrational to go into the government and think about the government, whether right or left, and expect them to act in an honorable or honest uh, way, in my opinion. And I don't expect them to do that. Now, if, you're, if we as a country, as a, as a people, are able to set left and right guidelines for them to stay within, I feel like it's manageable, and that's what we've done so far. But now it's becoming unmanageable because there's so much power, not necessarily in the executive office, but if somebody's able to become a congressman and a senator and stay in federal government for 45 years, they build immense power, almost undefeatable power. Biden might not win the election, but he will still have immeasurable power when it comes to American politics. Even, oh, yeah. even after he loses yeah. in November, he will still have immeasurable power and the ability to put people together or read the fucking tea leaves and, 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 and make little moves because he understands how government works and he has fucking people who owe him favors, right? That should be impossible in this country. Service was meant, by the way, George Washington didn't have to leave after his second term. He chose to leave. He could have... There's actually a famous quote from uh, John Adams' wife, who is a big... John Adams was an attorney, right? Harvard-educated attorney. He became the second president of the United States. His wife was one of his closest confidants, a brilliant woman. And there's a quote from her, and it's... I can't remember exactly how it goes, but it's something to the effect of, that man could have ruled until he died, and he chose not to. Right. I have to look, FDR came back. It is possible. Yeah. Um, Fuck, could you imagine if Trump wins and he says, eh, I think things are going well. Let's go for a third term. What do you think? People would fucking riot. I, I honestly don't <laughs> think there should be term limits for president. I don't either. I think there should be term limits for Senate and Congress. I don't understand it for president. If you if you want to do it that bad, like, because it's to me, it's the most miserable job in the world. There's no other fucking organization on earth where if the CEO is doing well, but his time's up, he leaves. Yeah. That's not like how you usually no. do things. But keeping the fucking mid-level managers mm -hmm. turning over, that's, a, that's an important part of any business. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense the way we run things, but what are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do? Uh, we get some sponsors who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 30% off, three zero. If you were a member of the military, first responder, or I don't know why I'm talking like that. I thought I'd spice it up a little bit, you know? Just really, really going on alone. Just kind of talking about um, who's, who's getting all the deals from Ghostbound. Uh, look, if you're a member of the military, a first responder, or uh, you work in the government, or you're a teacher, you get 30% off everything in the entire store. That is sheets, pillows, adjustable bases, 
all of it. You can bundle it all together. Um, you can get 90 pillows if you want and take 30% off. Uh, just do it all at once. Um, if you're a dumb, dumb civilian like myself, you get 25% off. If you order a mattress, you get two free pillows right now. And the pillows are just as good as the mattress. I can promise you that. Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today, where as always, they have a 36 month pay as you go program. No interest uh, at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. So all of the deals that I just mentioned, you can just go on, uh, you can go on there, bundle them together and, uh, congratulations. You're getting those for 36 months. No interest on all of that shit. Are you okay? I am. You sound like you might be having some problems. We had an Amber alert off screen. Um, that, uh, freaked everybody out. They have silver alerts now, by the way. What's that? For old people. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. It's it's an Amber Alert, but for like lost elderly people. No lie, by the way. We had an, we just had an Amber Alert go off yeah, here. Um, when these fucking things hit, it is intense, isn't it? Like it is very distracting. It would, I mean, it's I'm glad that it exists. Same. Because like it but it rings all throughout the usually cases like this get solved within the first forty eight hours and people like an Amber Alert will flash and they'll have like a license plate number and then everybody spends the next two days looking for their license plate. Yeah. It's, it's a perfect system. It works great. It is, but it, it, it scares the shit out of you. So if you're listening at home or watching, you're like, did, did Ross have a, did he stroke out live on air? Close. There was an Amber Alert that, that freaked the shit out of me. It's just a blaring uh, horn that comes in off your phones. The other part about it is how does my phone know where I'm at? Dan, that scares the shit out of me. Uh, well, look, man, they're collecting all your data. Come on. <laughs> let's not, not. We just moved to Texas 48 hours later. And I'm getting Amber Alerts yeah. from Texas already where it's just like, hey, man. Everybody's worried about uh, a potential coronavirus vaccine having some kind of locator chip in it. Like you're carrying one around in your. Look, there's reasons to be suspicious about a coronavirus vaccine. Absolutely. Yeah. But having a fucking chip implanted in you is not one of them. No. Because you're carrying that bitch around 24 hours a day already. They know Just where relax, you are guys. already. That Amber Alert is, is proof positive of it where it was like, shit, how do they yeah. know that I live here in North Carolina anymore? Uh, next up, liquidiv.com, D'Anthony. We're going to have the CEO on soon to discuss the cellular transport technology. I, look, man, I've been a huge fan of this. This was one of the ones that I reached it, out for. You're a fan of it because it works. Yes. I'm a fan of it because I understand how it works, right? And yeah. that's the difference between you and I. Like, <laughs> you'll just accept things, and I'm like, let me make sure it's actually, but it's. I'll accept my feelings. So yeah. Nick, my neighbor, was the one. We went on a bender uh, for like a, you know, a parent's night out type of deal. Um, and when we woke up in the morning, he was like, I was like, man, I have not been this hungover in a while. And he goes, dude, have you had this liquid IV? Mm -hmm. So I put it in my drink and I was like, holy shit. Um, cause you can, I guess you can get it at like Costco and all that other stuff. CVS, and Costco, a number of places. Yeah. So I reached out Walgreens. to him. Yeah. Well, I, re I reached out to, to our advertisers and said, Hey man, can you get liquid IV on the show? This shit's the fucking best. It rehydrates you. If you put it in like 16 ounces of water, it's just, it's one of those pouches and you just pour the powder in, you're good to go, right? right? But it rehydrates you like that. And I was like, oh, fuck, I feel great. And then I got it hooked on it. So much so, in fact, that I was like, all right, well, now I want a promo code for this because I don't want to pay full price. Right. And uh, luckily, they came on board. So if you go to liquidiv.com, um, you get 25% off with the promo code Drinking Bros on there. And my first order of business, the day that we signed that deal, I went on their fucking website, used their promo course, code, yeah, yeah. and then had it sent to my house. Um, Is that code live? Because I just tried to buy all of your stuff with it. it, it like, dead serious. They're like, oh, uh, hold on. We'll they were like, it, we'll give it to you. Yeah, I was we'll like, yeah, I buy my, I buy yeah. my own stuff. And uh, yeah, I had, I had like eight bags shipped to the house. And they it's, were like, Jesus Christ, you really do drink this? And I was like, yeah, dude, yeah. I drink it every day. It's, one of the, it's another one of those products like Kill Cliff that we know works. Yeah, well, I dude, I got caught by Kill Cliff using my own promo code. Yeah, well... I, I, when we moved the, uh, the address changed on the credit card and they sent me a thing. They were like, Hey man, uh, that, that credit card, whatever didn't go through. I was like, oh, I switched my address. Um, when I gave him the proper address, the guy wrote back and he goes, Hey man, like, you know, we're a sponsor on the yeah. show. We'll just get, and I was yeah, like, Ryan Roberts no, is dude. always like, we'll just send you stuff. I'm like, you can send us stuff for the studio, but let us buy our home stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dude. Uh, otherwise it's still a great discount. Like who cares? It's an amazing discount. Otherwise yeah. you'd be sending me fucking cases of this shit all the time. And it's like, dude, I'll buy it. Um, I will bankrupt you. Asking for free shit. But liquid IV works because the chemical compound inside of it, it's a combination of electrolytes and a number of other things mm -hmm. that 
reshape water molecules to make them more absorbable into your body. Yeah. That's all it does. It's like basic science. And it took us fucking forever to figure this shit out. I have no idea why it took so long to figure it out. But the CTT that they promote, the cellular transport technology, mm-hmm. all it does, all it is is like a way, it's a very simple way for your fucking bloodstream to absorb water more like at a higher yield. So instead of having to drink a gallon of water a day, which a lot of these new fitness uh, uh, fads of, or, or diets need, yeah. the reason they need you need that much water is because your body only absorbs so much of it. Mm-hmm. But if you can make your body absorb more, you can drink less water, which takes you less time out of your day. Yeah, dude. Less resources, all that stuff. That's why I do it. Yeah. I, I, drink, I drink one in the morning and I'm good to go. Fuck it. Go to liquidiv.com, promo code Drinking Bros, 25% off. Uh, and it'll get there quick. I, try it, man. I, look, I've been using it for two years, I think, at this point. And they've only been a sponsor just recently, uh, literally because we reached out. Um, what else? What, what else? What's what's the last one on uh, today's docket? Well, technically, we've got a couple more, but we can. Yeah. Who are they? Uh, well, Kill Cliff's one of them, but we already talked about that. KillCliffCBD.com, promo code Drinking Bros. Uh, we'll get you 20% off and free shipping there. Um, three amazing flavors. I'm a yeah. grape guy. Uh, we're watching the UFC fight tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. We usually tape the Monday shows on a, on a Friday. Watching the UFC fight tomorrow night. I had that case, is uh, they were already shipped into my house. Yeah. Because I know that I'm going to get wet with some uh, vodka um, from KillCliffCBD.com. Yeah. Uh, mango, orange kush, and grape. Um, no. There is no THC in this, so you will not piss hot if you're taking a drug test out there for uh, whatever your job yeah, it's is. Funny. Uh, our 25 Sully, milligrams in every single can. Arcelli, our new uh, uh, director of marketing and sales, mm-hmm. by the way, which is a big step for us. Yeah. Um, actually, we were on the phone this morning talking about business stuff, and she was like, tell me what CBD is and what THC is and what the difference is. It was a very interesting conversation because a lot, I feel like a lot of people don't know. No. She goes, she goes wait, so... Am I going to get high off of this? That's exactly. what we get all the time. Yes. Yeah. And am I going to piss hot for this? Yeah. No, you will not. No. In America, so we have a new sponsor coming on that does, it's called Feels. Mm-hmm. Well, you'll hear about more about them next week, but they do more like uh, a different type of ingestion of CBD, right? Because we feel like it's a really important product. Edibles, yeah. It's, it's, it's stuff that you consume, yeah, instead yeah. of drinking. It's not an RT. It's not a ready to drink, uh, as it were. But anyways... She's like, so one gets you high and the other one doesn't. No, nothing gets you high. Yeah. And actually, I come to find out by asking f- questions that it seems like they get their source material from the same place. Mm-hmm. So they're both very good. To, to legally sell CBD oil in America, you have to start with a plant that has the amount, like either the amount or less than the amount of THC that you can even piss hot for for the whole plant. So there's no chance you'll ever piss hot with this stuff. Right. Ever. Ever, 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 don't, ever. Don't go buy CBD from some fucking rickety bullshit place because you're gonna. There's gonna be weird shit in it. Yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. that that's been going on. It's been going on with even in the THC market with with uh, with uh, vape oils. Mm-hmm. There have been weird shit in them if you don't buy them from reputable dealers. And CBD is even worse because there was no regulation for a long time and people were just making it. Go to a trusted source like KillCliffCBD.com, dude. Uh, big fan of those guys. And uh, again, man, that's our fucking summer drink. It's our it's our white boy summer drink. Yeah. Um, sad, sad boy fall, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the last and then, one's ExpressVPN, by the way. ExpressVPN.com forward slash drinking bros. Now, this will protect all your shit. The only phone that didn't go off for the Amber Alert was Dan's phone in his room. <laughs> It's you got expressvpn.com forward slash yeah. drinking bros on the phone. All my devices. All of your devices. You're locked one. in. I have not put it on my phone yet. That is the only thing that I don't have it on. I've, I've got, got it on everything else. I've got two iPads. I have two laptops and I've got a phone and all of them have ExpressVPN on it. Yes. Uh, I, my phone is the only one that does not have it yet. Uh, you were the only one during the Amber Alert. It was like, I don't understand why my phone's freaking out. Because all your shit's unlocked. It's the last thing I have to do. Um, look, if you're out there right now, especially the times when people are trying to steal money from you, uh, you're out of your Netflix queues and all that other stuff, uh, this seamless app that runs in the background of all your electronic devices will help you fucking beat all of it. Um, go to expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros today, $7 a month. It'll protect your passwords for all your accounts. It'll help you get into Netflix and other countries. Um, and it'll help you watch porn at work. And also because there is a firewall at a lot of people's work for that. How many times have you bought things like done online shopping from your phone? 
Of uh, millions. Computer. Yeah. Like, come on. You just like hold your phone up to your face, double click that right button. Yep. And buy stuff, and you're like, you have no idea. Your money just went out into the ether somewhere. Make sure you're protected. That's don't, it. Don't Go to expressvpn.com yeah. forward slash drinking bros today. Seven bucks a month. If you sign up for a year, you get three months free. Dan, where does the media go from here? Um, does it change after this election's over? Because mm. uh, hypothetical, let's say Biden gets in there, mm. right? Um, you're not going to be able to, to rely on Trump every single day if you're the media. A lot of these places are going out of business already. Uh, the latest one is this uh, New York Daily News. Um, for New Yorkers, whoever's lived there, there's three papers, the, the Times, the Post, and the Daily News. Mm. Uh, that one is gone. Uh, New York Times, look, I, I know Trump says it all the time about the, the failing New York Times. It really is true. The only thing that is saving them right now is podcasts. Um, in particular, yeah. the Daily, um, that's, that's one of their huge hits that is, is bringing in a lot of advertising dollars for those guys now. What happens and does this ever get corrected or, or, or is it too far gone? Are we too far gone in the media that that all of these stories will forever be slanted to whatever your viewpoint is? Um, yeah, I think it's probably too far gone, to be honest. I don't see how it could. I don't see what the path to coming back to the old school version of news. And look, a lot of people say like a lot of people bring up Walter Cronkite, for mm -hmm. example, and say. He was the last trusted news source or whatever the fuck. Walter Cronkite took very hard stances against Vietnam and is largely credited for public opinion leading to the Vietnam War being shut down, right? Now, that is, in my opinion, a bifurcated example. It's a good example of how somebody can use their influence to make good things happen because we should never have been there in the first place. But it's also an example of not understanding who you are. Like, in my opinion, 65,000 Americans died in Vietnam. That's a lot of people. And several million of Vietnamese people died, right? That's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. there, there isn't, unless it's everybody, in my opinion, or a much larger number than just that. There's 7 billion, almost 8 billion people on this planet now. Liberty is the most important thing. It's more important than your life, and it's more important than my life. That's why me and millions of other people, whether through military service or police or whatever the fuck else it was, decided in our heads, like, this idea of liberty in America is more important than my life. And we put our lives literally on the line to defend it. I think that he made a tragic mistake, and everything since then has been politicized. People saw that Walter Cronkite, as a single individual in America, was able to turn the tide of the Vietnam War and bring American troops home. Mm -hmm. They saw that he used that strategy in a successful way against the entire fucking government. This one man on television. And now that's what news media thinks it is. That's what Anderson Cooper thinks he is. Mm -hmm. He thinks he's a warrior. He's, yeah, I, he is not. Yeah. By the way, he's not a warrior. He is a person that is supposed to be reporting the facts to me. Don't tell me that a brutal dictator was killed. Tell me that a dictator was killed and I'll fucking decide if he was brutal or not. All right. That is the end of that fucking conversation. It is not your responsibility. And look, while it may be in the fucking grand scheme of things, or I'm sorry, in, in the moment rather, it may be the right thing to do to use your voice to affect change at that level. Understand that there are things going on other than you. All right. If you can do something like, hey, if somebody's getting beat up over there, and I'm protecting these 10 people right now, and I leave to go stop that person from getting beat up, and then these 10 people get killed because of it, then I fucked up. Yes, I did a, I did a fucking, 100% what I did was a moral thing to do. I went to stop somebody from being beaten up and being injured. But in doing so, I abdicated my fucking responsibility over here. I fucking left my responsibility to protect the American people, and that is what journalism is supposed to do. It's supposed to inform and protect the American people, and they have failed miserably at that and they can they're going to continue to do so there's no coming back from that people don't trust the media anymore no and everybody views themselves as a walter cronkite that every story that that they either report on or publish that that is their moment to stand up for america and americans um by putting their own slants on whatever story it is a lot of it happens to be against the president and politics right now but 
that's the reason that I don't think this is going to change. And I think it's only going to get worse. Mm -hmm. um, the, the thing that will happen, though, uh, if Biden magically gets in somehow is the interest for all this clickbaity shit um, will be gone. You have a guy that is hidden. Uh, he doesn't make a lot of statements. He doesn't speak now. Um, he's going to try to limit himself on gaffes and everything else. The only way to do that is to stay hidden and stay out of public view. And that's not going to be interesting enough to, re to, to report on. Uh, you know, if, if the left gets in with all of the shit that's happened, protests and white privilege and, and everything else that you want to bitch about in America, defunding police, Congratulations. Your party will be in all of the things that you've bitched about and uh, protested about and, and rallied against for the last four years. Now what? Like, well, I mean, like what happens in Portland? Do here, they just fucking go home? Here's the problem with winning. Because after, in politics especially, once you win, you've got to govern. And we discovered this as on a global level in the mid-2000s, Right. So Hamas, the mm -hmm. Palestinian organization that is classified partially, the militant wing is a terrorist organization and the fucking political wing is not. Uh, Hamas won the 2006 elections in Palestine. They became the fucking leaders of Palestine. And what happened in Palestine? They fucking lost it. All they did was ride a populist movement into power, but they had no plan to govern it got completely fucked. Terrorism got, became out of control because, look, terrorism is simply another form of crime. That's all it is. Like, it's, that's not to fucking say it's not horrible and the, and the results are horrible and the fact that people can do that is, is, is immoral. But it is simply another form of crime. People that are impoverished and feel slighted and oppressed are going to act out. The end. It's happened throughout human history and it will continue to happen. Terrorism is not something you could fight. It's something you solve with money and education. It's what fucking uh, Charlie Wilson tried to do from Texas, by the way, oh. from down in Nacogdoches. He tried his best. He fought the fucking Cold War better than any human being in America ever fought it. He is the reason the goddamn Iron Curtain fell. And all he did afterwards was go back to the Congress and Senate and ask for some money to educate people in Kabul. That's all he wanted. Let's go back to this place that we just destabilized. Make sure they know we did it. We're the ones that did it. We didn't care that you're Muslim. Right. We knew that you were human beings. And because of that, we wanted to help you. And instead of doing that, the American public was like, nah, fuck them. Yeah. Taliban immediately happened. Like, are you fucking kidding me? And we're going to do it again. Yeah. We're going to do it again and again and again because people are fucking stupid. And that's just the way it is. So I, I don't think there's any coming back from that stuff. Honestly, I don't, I don't think there is because... I don't either, man. At this point in mass with 330 million people in our population, like what, what's... People don't... You, you, we can't agree on what reality is. I think that reasonable people should be able to agree that the, the concept... And this is a left concept, actually. The concept that, the, that people can be as healthy as they can afford to be in a country like ours that's so prosperous, that is immoral. Like to look at a poor person and say, well, you just can't be as healthy as I can because you're poor. To me, that's immoral. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't give a fuck what your beliefs are on, on private versus public health care or any of that shit. Those are all red herrings. The fact is we have to provide health care for our fucking people. We have to provide education. We have to provide upper mobility. I want, if, if anybody's gonna, we don't have to be in a system where there are winners and losers. Like, what Jordan Peterson talks about all the time is equality doesn't mean equality of outcome. It means equality of opportunity, right? That's a big fucking difference. And it seems subtle, but it's a big difference. Everybody's got to have the same opportunity to get things. And right now they don't. Because if you get charged, like I said before, 83% of all bankruptcies in this country are because of medical expenses. Mm -hmm. That means poor people are completely excluded from good health care. That is just a fact. So how, what are we doing to address that? Fuck all the politics. Fuck private health care. Fuck big pharmaceutical. Fuck the Affordable Care Act. Fuck all this bullshit. What are we doing to solve that goddamn problem right there? Like, is it okay with you as a human being to know that there are poor people, people like single mothers in inner cities or in rural areas or whatever the fuck it is, 
that can't get access to good health care because of their economic status. Is that okay with you? Because it's not okay with me. Yeah, it's not okay with me, but it, and it's also one of these things that if you're gonna, if you're the media, and you're gonna focus or spotlight stories, um, focus on stories or, or spotlight them, why not go after these stories? Like, who gives a fuck about what the president tweeted? You know, I, it, because it's clickbait. That's all. Like and, and nobody's gonna click the same, on these stories. It's the same of, thing with kneeling for the flag. Look, all these people, particularly in ESPN lately, like. We all knew the whole time that it wasn't about the flag or it wasn't about the anthem or the troops or nothing. It may be not for you, motherfucker. It's called empathy. Right. Put yourself in other people's shoes. People are deeply offended by that. So everyone knows the point of protest, by the way, in a social or cultural insurgency, however you want to frame it, is to gain awareness. Awareness, then patronage, and then an implicit act. Like, you gain awareness. People know about your problem. You gain patronage. Everybody's pretty much like, oh, yeah, this is a good idea. Let's do this. George Floyd, by the way. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. That's where we were. The next step is like, what's the next? What do we do to effectively take these ideas and solve these problems? That's the next step. And we didn't do that. We kept protesting. We kept kneeling. We kept fucking having riots. And now nobody gives a shit. Nothing will happen. This is on the left. Yeah. It is on the left. I hate to say that. In some ways, because I don't want to alienate people that have fought really hard to push a lot of these issues forward, but you fucked it up badly. Like everybody was on board and you fucked it up. And then you're, you're the fucking blame for it. The reason that Trump got elected in the first place is because the Democratic Party refused to take the temperature of the room and said, hey, we're going to nominate this woman that was anti marriage equality that attacked women who her husband sexually assaulted, who voted for Iraq, who voted for the Patriot Act, who did all this bullshit. She was against everything they believed in, but she's a woman, right? Like that fucking singular focus on one issue like that, the fucking tunnel vision on, and it's fundamentalism is what it is. Liberalism in the country today is essentially the new version of religious fundamentalism. The cancel culture, all mm -hmm. of it. Like you don't see... I hate to quote Yoda, but only the Sith deal in absolutes, <laughs> right? Life, real life is nuanced, right? Just because I feel a certain way or me and my fucking vast majority of people feel a certain way, white people are like 83 or 80 something percent of the country. Yeah. If you include like white Latinos or white Hispanics or whatever the fuck, just because we feel a certain way doesn't mean we don't have a moral obligation to take care of everybody else, right? E pluribus unum, out of many, one. It's real goddamn simple, but we yeah. can't fucking grasp it. And I don't know why. I, I, I honestly, because personally, I don't have a problem with it. Whenever somebody, whenever I do something, so like, hey, here's how I feel about that. I'm like, oh, cool. All right. Like that's, it's just a comment. And I'll always it's listen. A, it's I, not I, a judgment. I, I, nobody wants comment. to listen either. Like I, I'll always listen to people where it's like, all right, why do you hate so-and-so? Why do you hate this or whatever? Just to hear their true ideas and opinions versus, well, I don't know. The media said this, Right. That's great. I, I don't care what the media thinks. Well, I, I care about what you think as a person. And then typically you sit down with fucking 99% of people and people are pretty passionate and, um, you know, about what they believe in, but they'll explain it to you in a thoughtful manner, but nobody's taking the time to, to do that. And the media certainly doesn't I'm going to read care. you some of the comments that I got from uh, this conversation I had on Facebook with some relatively liberal people. Yesterday. By the way, I, uh, I, before you do that, I do the same thing as you do. Mm -hmm. So, like, I didn't unfriend anybody because of their political beliefs or mm -hmm. anything else. The opposite, actually. I want to hear what other people are thinking. If I only limited myself to people who thought like me, it would be fucked, and I don't think I could get a, a well-informed opinion right. from everyone. Mm -hmm. So I do the same thing, by the way. So I make this comment about how um, both of these candidates aren't really – great but at least one of them is not socialist and uh here's a comment we keep giving billions and billions to wall street and big companies for bailouts why is that why is that possible uh besides it's not like they can just enact the shit on their own meaning the meaning biden and harris um checks and balances blah 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 and i'm like it, it's it's i don't like corporate welfare why are you putting me in a position where you think that I'm going to fucking defend that? 
Like that's the binary political bullshit. Like you think because I said that I don't like the fact that Kamala Harris, the now presumptive VP nominee for the Democratic Party, because the convention hasn't happened yet, but it's coming soon. Right. Was a co-sponsor of the Green New Deal, which has federalized banking. That is a that is the first step to socialism, motherfucker. If it's history, you can read this any goddamn country that's ever had socialism. This is how it starts. Mm-hmm. Federalized banking, and then you take over the fucking means of production next. That's how it fucking works. And why is that in the Green New Deal is what I don't understand. Who the understand. fuck knows, dude? Who the fuck knows? It makes like no sense. It makes no sense to me. And here are some of the, uh, here are some of the other comments. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Um, how do y'all end up with these Neanderthals as followers? Because right? <laughs> I'm clearly not a smart guy. What is this uh, on, by the way? Uh, it's on Facebook. On um, our page or your page? It's, it's not on either. It's on some girl's page. That That's I, funny. That I know. Um, why bother with these chads? And if there's anybody that is as far removed from a chad on earth than me, then I would love to meet him. Because I'm pretty <laughs> far removed from a chad. Um, let's see. I let's see. Uh, what's this next one? There's one really funny one. A Kyle, maybe. This guy says, "LOL, read books, you Chad." Yeah. A Kyle. That, that was the responses that I got to what you would expect from me, which is like thoughtful and well articulated and evidence based arguments. Right. That's what you get from the left these days. Because look. The left has been put into, and I, when I say the left, I mean people on the left have now been put into a position where they have to defend people that they are object, that they're like, they're completely opposed to. The same thing with Hillary Clinton. Mm-hmm. Like, nothing she's done administratively in her public life from the mid 90s until present has matched up with the progressive mindset. And the same thing with Harris and the same thing with Biden. Biden wrote the goddamn crime bill. Yeah. And Harris enforced it. In the largest state in the country. Yeah. Look, uh, to me, it's easy. Uh, the, look, the left is owned. The left owns the media. They'll never report on any of this shit. And uh, me personally, like I've started to go more and more into podcasts. Uh, I will say this: it was an article this morning that that talked about uh, the rise of QAnon and that this is their year. The, the problem with the media and all this shit, when you're not reporting the facts and you're slanting it so far to the left, is you start looking for conspiracies that aren't there. I'm not a tinfoil hat guy. I never have been. Um, but I find myself watching today's media, uh, mainstream, you know, ABC, NBC, all this stuff, not the, the, the syndicated uh news shows like Fox News and, and, and CNN and stuff, I already know they're going far right or left. Uh, you would hope the big four networks don't, but they, they are. And it's looking for it. And you're like, man, I find myself picking apart these articles and looking for conspiracies that may or may not be there just because I'm so paranoid about what I'm reading or what is being forced to me in the media. Uh, me personally, I've gone more and more into podcasts Uh, just listening to podcasts to try to find my news or find people who have different beliefs than what is being jammed down. Uh, I would say the, the, the throats of the the corporations, because let's face it, the fucking NBC is a corporation that is owned by, I mean, fuck even Bezos owns goddamn uh, Washington post. Like you're being fed a narrative that's being jammed down your throat by all of these people that are in power that want you to believe in the same things that they believe in. Therefore, me personally, I'm going more and more towards podcasts to try to find voices that are original and unique and maybe have a different perspective on things that uh, aren't on your your TV screen every night at 6.30 p.m. You know who owns the New York Times, by the way, right? Mm -mm. Like Carlos Slim, the Latin Latin American communications guy. Yeah. Yeah. Billionaire. He, he was for a very long time the richest man in the world. Yeah. Uh, and Bezos owns uh, Washington Post. Yeah. Um, if you're out there, I'm surprised Musk hasn't bought something to. He's not that guy. To write it up. No, he's, he's not. He's not that guy. I feel like Elon Musk would be the same guy if he was rich or poor, to be honest. Yeah. And he's the kind of. And I, honestly, I feel like Bloomberg's that same guy. I, I, I like Bloomberg. I didn't like in New York when he did the fucking soda tax and bullshit like that. I thought that was stupid. Like it's just ineffectual people. 
I know why he did it. He did it because the seatbelt fines made a big difference in making people wear seatbelts. Right. And raising taxes on cigarettes made people stop smoking. Got it. Yeah. yeah. But those two things definitely worked. But you can't do that when it comes to like everyday consumables. You just can't. Man, there's a limit where you go. And people fucking hate it on for that. And with good reason. I agree with them on that. But the way he handled the criminal justice system in New York, mm-hmm. fucking phenomenal. He made, he didn't make, but he continued Giuliani's success. And w- under his fucking rule, whatever you want to call it, New York was pretty dope. Yeah. I mean, it was a fucking relatively safe and fun place to hang out. Yeah. And now it's not. It's bullshit now. And yep. people are fucking leaving in droves because of it. Bloomberg it, owns the Bloomberg News. Bloomberg, though, right? yeah. He owns Bloomberg. So it's like, I don't know. I, I just don't see. I don't think Elon Musk would ever even care about that. I honestly don't think he gives two fucks what you think about. No, it. You're, you're probably right. It's probably me being hopeful. Um, and by the way, I, I know what would it even be? A lot of this show we've talked about negative shit. I am hopeful. I just don't know where it's going to come from, and why, or who's going to change it. But it's going to uh, come from the people. Eventually. It will. I, I just wonder what that's going to be. Like something will be created eventually. We always bitch about these apps and uh, not being public utilities and everything else. Uh, look, the latest was today was Fortnite being ripped off of uh, yeah. uh, Apple. But they had planned that for a while. They've been planning that for six months now. They, they told Apple and uh, Google Play that they were going to pull their app off those mobile platforms if they didn't stop charging these like 30%. 30%. I, I did not know that was yeah, the number. Like even, Jesus Christ. Even, even Amazon doesn't charge that much no. when you put products on their site. Uh, and they do everything for you. All the all fucking the Google Play Store is doing is offering a fucking uh, a, a waypoint for your a pl- platform to put it up. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Like yeah. Amazon actually does stuff to help you market and sell and ship. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they actually, they're actually doing something for you. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't get it. Uh, they... they I do get it, though, because they feel like they have a monopoly and you don't have anywhere else to go. Well, they do have a, a and, monopoly, and look, yeah. yeah. If if a company that makes as much money as uh, wh- whomever, who owns Fortnite? Giorgio, do you know who owns them? Uh, Epic Games. Epic Games, yeah. yeah. Epic Games own Fortnite. If a company that big that's making that much money says that shit, mm-hmm. like, hey, you're, you're fucking up a little bit. You may want to dial it back a, a bit. Yeah. And the two major companies, the two only companies that provide widespread free downloads of software on mobile devices say no. They absolutely colluded together. Yeah. There's no chance they didn't. 100%. And good for fucking Epic Games. Fuck those guys. Yeah. I, I agree, man. And, uh, you know, the, the same thing happened with Rogan and, and YouTube. Mm-hmm. He was tired of his videos being demonetized or saying what was, you know, fucking bad language. Mm-hmm obviously, which we use a lot on here, um, and uh, otherwise are, are harmful. Or I, Look, you can read the, the laundry list of YouTube's policies. Uh, and he switched over to Spotify, but it took somebody like Spotify to come along and say, all right, great, we're going to do this, and uh, you can have whatever guests on you want, and we're not going to penalize you I for it. I guess we're waiting for whomever the center right or even just a political version of George Soros is somebody who has reached that level where they don't give a fuck anymore. They have all the money they could ever need and they don't need validation. They just want to make the world a better place. That person to me, and it may be Elon Musk at some point that would be, that would be a superhero that, that far surpasses any that we've ever imagined in comic books or movies. Yeah. Right. Somebody that came along that said, you know what? I don't give a fuck about the goddamn profit or motive or any of that bullshit. I don't care about myself or my own company. I care about the truth. A billionaire that was able to do that, I would fucking follow to the gates of hell, yeah. to be honest, because it's so important to have that information and be able to make good, educated, wise decisions based on that information. And certainly right now we can't. And like especially during way. this time period. Um, but uh, we've always said that about our listeners. Like, dude, if you're a billionaire out there, just reach out. Give us $10 million. We'll make all these fucking weird movies. Um, you know? Yeah, sure. <laughs> the That's shit true. that you can't see anymore, we'll make. We don't give a fuck. Uh, now's the point in the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week. Um, this one was submitted by Amy Stortini. Like that name from New Jersey. Um, 
She's a new drinking bro, she says, and she's nominating Steven Lenker. Reason for nomination, uh, she says, my boyfriend is a police officer and loves you guys. He's watched all your videos and now has got me into it. You guys are hilarious and make him laugh every single day. Uh, also tried to surprise him with the pork of the ocean shirt and it was sold out in a large. Stay safe, my friends. Cheers. Thank you, Amy. And uh, cheers. Cheers to your boyfriend, Stephen. It's Pork of the Sea, by the way. Pork of the Sea. We'll, we'll bring that one back. We'll bring, we'll bring it back. Um, we're going to bring back a lot of merch to the store, uh, to drinkingbros.com store. Going, yeah, I'm going tomorrow afternoon. Me and Jared are going to look at a place that's going to start manufacturing a lot of our stuff. So, uh, yeah, well, it'll, it'll There'll be a bunch of stuff enough. back in the store. There's still a bunch of stuff in the store now. I know we don't plug it that much, but uh, go to drinkingbros.com. You can get some butter soft teas uh, for 20 bucks. They're like $19.99. We, we kept it affordable for everybody. And uh, uh, we greatly appreciate it. Go to iTunes and rate the show a five star and write a, a quick review. That'll help scoot us on up the charts. D'Anthony, mm. uh, I thought it was important to do this show today, man, because I, I just don't know where to go from here. And I, I know I, I sound like a downer on the last episode, but I, I really believe it's a fucking serious problem. And I don't know what's going to happen with the media, but uh, hopefully we bring a little levity to your day and uh, we've become our own media, I, I feel like. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. Maybe it's us that do it and we create the news. Maybe. We'll find out. Uh, for D'Anthony to Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.